Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Amir and welcome to the new office. This is going to be the new space that we're going to be filming in so I hope you like it. Let me know some things that we're going to be working in the background so just let me know if you have some ideas on what to put on the walls or actually I'm thinking of making this like the main uh, space to film this wall back here but I don't have a couch and I'm probably going to put a couch over there and um, maybe an LED strip whatever but till that's in the work in the background we'll work with this background for now and let me know what you guys think about this one anyways today I want to talk to you about the eight things that you should know if you're thinking about using Rogaine Rogaine is something that I've been using for the past like two and a half almost three years now and th these are just eight things that are the most common things that I wish that I knew when I started and some common things that I've been getting DMs from from you guys on Instagram in the comment section below and you know there's frequently asked questions that I think need to be answered so with that being said what the hell are we waiting for without any further ado let's go ahead and jump right into the video the first thing that you should know about Rogaine is if you want to use it if you plan to use it do not expect 100% of your hair to grow back and that's just the truth of it Rogaine is never guaranteeing you that you're gonna be restored with a full head of hair all this simply does is it helps prevent hair loss by freezing your hair by where it's at and potentially restoring up to 30 to 40 percent of your hair so if you are going in with a bald head and thinking that oh by using Rogaine I'm gonna have a full head of hair like how I had when I was I don't know 13 years old then you're gonna set yourself up for some major disappointment so realize that Rogaine is simply a freezing factor where it's just gonna basically freeze your hair where it's at so the balding doesn't at least progress any further but it's not actually going to restore 100 percent of your hair if you want to restore your hair and stop it from the root which is excess DHT then you should maybe look into finasteride as it is a drug that does come with some side effects um, but weigh out your pros and cons and see if you're a good fit for that number two it takes time this is something that you guys who DM me two months in asking me yo this stuff's not kicking in instead I'm losing hair you need to realize that rule game takes time it goes with your hair process so don't worry about gaining your hair back or seeing results or seeing a decrease in your hair loss until i would say at least the fourth or fifth month that's when the complete process actually begins and the process of the hair rejuvenation will start that's when you'll actually start seeing some kind of result until then hold tight and keep using it twice a day and be patient with the process number three in the beginning stages of using Rogaine you need to expect hair loss this is otherwise known as the shedding phase which happens within the first month or two where Rogaine basically comes in and it kills all the weak hairs and the hair cycle actually kicks in and your hair comes back and it grows back fuller, thicker, and stronger. So as we said, just continue using it. Don't freak out when you see hair loss. Don't freak out when you see yourself abnormally going bald. Just stick with the process, be patient with it, stay consistent, and those balding spots that you see will recover and it's 100% normal and it's just part of the process. Number four, this might be a tough pill to swallow for most of us. The usage of Rogaine and Minoxidil will have to become part of your daily routine. This is not something that you can just use, get results from, and just ditch it. And if you don't, if you choose to just use it for the results and ditch it, you're actually gonna lose your results and look even worse than you were before. So this is actually a very big drawback that sets back most people from using Minoxidil. And this is actually a huge factor that you should consider before even starting the treatment. Is this something that you can see doing for as long as maybe you can afford a hair transplant or maybe they have a better solution out there or this is just something that you just don't want to do because it can get expensive personally it's not a big deal to me because i just see it as if i'm styling my hair so whenever i'm styling my hair with my pomade um, i'll just throw in rogaine over there it's really not a big deal to me and I found a way to kind of make it more of a natural thing to me rather than a process where I have to go to the bathroom, apply it, and make the process very long and painful and hard. And number five, if the benefits outweigh the cost for you, and if you guys do end up saying, yes, I'm gonna do this, yes, I don't mind using Rogaine, if you want to save yourself from a lot of itchiness, a lot of irritation, a lot of mess, a lot of just nasty, unorganized mess, then 
Do not use the liquid. When I first got into using minoxidil, I wish someone had told me this before I bought a three month supply of the liquid because the liquid, when you put it on, it's just very nasty. You put it on and then it starts drizzling in the back of your ear, it goes in the back of your neck. And very unorganized, very messy compared to the foam. The foam, you can just shake up the bottle, put some in your hair and just apply it to the specific area where you need it. And a lot of people try to argue with me and they say in the comments like, yo, the liquid is more effective, it does this, it does that but it's honestly it's all the same thing it's all about how you apply it and if you're applying it to the right spot um, and it doesn't matter if it's a foam or a liquid they will both equally give you the same result so guys if you have the option to pick between foam or liquid please do go with the foam it will make your life a whole lot easier and it will save you from a lot of irritation a lot of itchiness and a lot of mess in the future especially if this is your daily routine you don't want to make a mess number six this is from my guys out there who think Rogaine is overratedly expensive and I want you to realize that Rogaine is not the only brand you can get minoxidil from. There's so many brands out there, there's like Kirkland, there's Hims, there's Keeps, there's all these other subscription services and things that help make minoxidil actually more affordable than you may think. Um, so don't think that you're just limited to the Rogaine brand because at the end of the day, Rogaine is just a brand, but they all create one similar thing, which is minoxidil. All minoxidil across the board are pretty much the same. So I don't think that you using the Rogaine brand or the Kirkland brand will affect your results. You can go with either or. The reason why I personally like Rogaine more is because I just like the density of the foam. It feels a little thicker and I can control it in my hand more. And when I work it in, for me, it just feels better. And for some reason, for me, one little bottle of Rogaine lasts me longer than the same size bottle of Kirkland. Maybe it's just me, but that's just my preference. You don't have to stick to my preference you can do your own research and at the end of the day minoxidil is minoxidil it does not matter what brand created it it will still give you the same exact results don't think that you can't afford it don't think that well oh my god this is way too expensive it's gonna break the bank but because no honestly you can get this stuff for like 20 bucks for like a three month supply I'll actually go ahead and help you out and link some affordable stuff in the comment section below so you don't have to go anywhere if that's what you're considering the seventh thing that you may want to know about Rogue Rogaine is if you are a good candidate. For some people, yeah, Rogaine may be great for them, but for others, it might not be so good for you. You will actually get the best results from Rogaine. One is if you're balding for less than five years. Two, if you hadn't gone completely bald yet. And three, if your bald spot is less than four to six inches. So back here, if, you're, if your bald spot is basically from here to here, it's, you're probably not a good fit. You know, And you wanna be realistic with this stuff. You don't wanna end up wasting your money and time and your efforts just to be let down. Evaluate yourself to see if you're a good candidate for this stuff. If not, then there are always other options out there. And that leads me to the last thing that I'm going to say about hair loss and Rogaine and all these other treatments out there that are for balding men like us. I want you guys to know that Rogaine is actually not the only option out there for you. If you fall into the category that I listed where you've been maybe balding for more than five years or that bald spot is maybe too big, maybe it's actually time to consider a hair transplant, you know, if you actually want your hair bad enough. If not, just completely accepted shave it off rock it with a beard and you will be just fine it's all about how you feel about it and if you feel confident in your skin and to rock a bald head and for other people out there who want to see results with their hair but are not ready to actually commit with Rogaine and make it part of their daily routine there are definitely other options out there like iRestore which is a laser hair growth therapy company um, they make laser hair growth helmets which I would also highly recommend if you're into the natural stuff there are natural oil massages that you can use there's PR RP therapy, there is uh, finasteride, there's all these different things that you can use to actually maximize your hair growth and to minimize the hair loss itself. And I've actually created a video on the six things I've used to reduce my hair loss and to basically restore my hair. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it up there and in the description below. Guys, I hope I answered some of your basic questions that you guys had about using minoxidil. I know it can get confusing because there's uh, so much information out there. Um, so I just took basically the most common asked questions and I put them in a video so let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section below and let me know what I can add to the office as well because I am still wondering and I'm not really you know artistically created I just put a plant there and some LED lights and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos here on Project Alpha other than that thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one peace